to the war in Iraq. I've been to Gaza eight times in, since 2009. I was part of the Gaza Freedom Flotilla that was attacked by the Israeli commandos, nine people being killed on it, 50 wounded. Uh, I was taken to Israel against my will, kidnapped into Israel, and then deported from Israel, saying the Israelis saying that I had entered their country illegally. I'm a member of Veterans for Peace, and we as veterans are here, along with allies, including Code Pink Women for Peace, to appeal to the ambassador of Israel uh, to send our message on to Tel Aviv. Dear Ambassador Dermer, as veterans who have witnessed the horror of war, we are deeply outraged by the state of Israel's slaughter of many innocent civilians in Gaza. The military assault against children, women, and men by air, by sea, and now by land is a clear violation of international laws of war and human rights. More than 300 Palestinians, and now it is over 500 Palestinians, have been killed, most of them civilians, nearly a quarter of them children. Thousands are wounded, including nearly 1,000 children. Veterans for Peace joins millions of people around the globe who are shocked by this vicious, one-sided slaughter. We understand the huge injustice of the Israeli occupation. Palestinians have been ethnically cleansed from their homes and forced to live in occupied West Bank or in the open-air prison that is Gaza. Mr. Ambassador, please tell the government of Israel to stop the massacre now. There should be an immediate end to all bombing and an immediate withdrawal of all military from Gaza. Mr. Ambassador, please remind Prime Minister Netanyahu that you can bomb the world into pieces, but you cannot bomb it into peace. Veterans for Peace calls for an end to the eight-year blockade of Gaza so that normal trade and travel can occur. Mr. Ambassador, please remind the government of Israel of the billions of dollars in aid that is provided to Israel by the United States. 
Veterans for Peace will push for an end to all military aid to Israel until such time as the Israeli occupation gives way to real peace negotiations based on human rights of all the people concerned. Veterans for Peace recommits itself to participating in the international campaign of boycott, divestment, and sanctions against Israel and Israeli products. We encourage all parties to search for a nonviolent path to peace. We urge both Hamas and the government of Israel to refrain from targeting civilians. We especially call on the state of Israel to stop its massive violence now. It is time to recognize the human rights of the Palestinian people, including their right to return to the homes from which they were forced to flee in 1948. Mr. Ambassador, the peoples of Palestine, Israel, and the world deserve to live in peace and harmony. The ultimate goal of Veterans for Peace is to abolish war. In the meantime, we stand ready to assist those Israelis and Palestinians who seek peace and reconciliation. Signed, Patrick McCann, President for the National Board of Directors, Veterans for Peace. I'd like to now introduce Tarek Koff, a Vietnam era Veterans for Peace. I'm here with Veterans for Peace. Somewhere children sleep and dream peacefully, but not tonight in Gaza. Somewhere children wake to a peaceful dawn, but not today in Gaza. Somewhere children play soccer by the sea, but not today in Gaza. We're here today as veterans to deliver a letter from Veterans for Peace to the Israeli ambassador. I am here as a Jew, and like many American Jews, I am appalled by what Israel is doing. The Israeli government and the U.S. Congress say Israel has the right to defend itself. So does the Palestinian population, with no tanks, aircraft, or navy facing the fourth most powerful military in the world. Palestinians have been living under brutal and strangling occupation for decades. Almost two million people in Gaza have been surviving in what has been called the largest open-air prison in history. The people in Gaza have been subject to decades, for, for decades, to regular IDF ground, sea, and air attacks targeting suspected militants and politicians and often killing innocent civilians. They are denied freedom to travel, to farm. Their infrastructure has been destroyed, water treatment plants, hospitals, schools, and power stations, all bombed during three horrific assaults in 2006, 2009, and 2012, and now again in 2014. Even fishermen struggling to eke out a subsistence living and feed people are targeted. Their, their boats machine gunned with fishermen sometimes forcibly kept in the water until they drown. Israel kills an average of one Palestinian child every three days. How much oppression can one people stand? Still, the majority of Palestinian resistance is nonviolent. Not so the violent, inordinate, and overwhelming Israeli response. But let us be clear. Israel is not responding to Hamas rockets. It is Hamas that has been provoked, and it's Hamas homemade rockets that are responding rather ineffectively, ineffectually. to a constant, ongoing, brutal, and killing aggression by Israel. The quote, most moral army in the world is again bombing and killing the people of Gaza. In 2009, after occupation cast lead, an Israeli soldier was quoted by Israel's Haaretz newspaper. Quote, that's what's so nice, supposedly, about Gaza. You see a person on a road, walking along a, p a path. He doesn't have to be with a weapon. You don't have to identify him with anything, and you can just shoot him, end quote. Palestinians are being subjected to a gradual genocide, and yet the U.S. Congress slavishly supports Israel, parroting that, quote, Israel has a right to defend itself. This is not war, this is not defense, it is murder. Israel needs to immediately cease its attack on Gaza, open the borders, end the blockade, and let the people of Gaza live like human beings. 
children in Palestine and in Israel need to be able to sleep, dream, and live in peace. Thank you. I got a quiz for all you uh, Americans out here. And Masad, you can take this uh, quiz too. Uh, does anyone know which country in the world offers free education all the way to university level? Is it the United States, the wealthiest country in the world? No. No. It's Israel. The country we subsidize. We subsidize them to get so their kids can have free education all the way to university level. So, next question. Who has free health care for all their citizens? Is it the United States? No. No. Israel, the recipient of $3.5 billion a year, and just last week, the United States Congress passed a bill that gives them an additional $650 million. Do we have a right to a job in this country? No. Do they in Israel? Yes. Do they have a right to housing? Yes. Do we in this country? No. So I want to say, who is better off? The state of Israel, which gets financing to do all these wonderful things for their citizenry, or us, who funds the terrorism by the illegal occupation, the terrorist entity called Israel. Why is it that we give all this money to fund the illegal occupation and the murder, the murder of innocent people in Gaza? I talk to friends in Gaza and they say, they keep calling and telling us to go somewhere, but there's nowhere to go. We keep trying and trying and trying to protect. I was hoping that none of this would happen. The killing of the three Israeli boys was probably a false flag as an excuse by Netanyahu to get more people killed in Gaza. This is a horrible, horrible crime. Netanyahu needs to be arrested, put in jail, and put on trial for his crimes. This has to stop now, today, right this minute. I don't care if they came from the illegal settlements or from Israel itself where they think they have legitimacy. I think we should go in front of every store that carries Israeli products with pickets. It's time to act now. Get rid of this war. Get rid of this illegal Israeli occupation. Boycott all Israeli products. Boycott all of their cultural events. Boycott all of their scientific events. Put pressure on them to stop this war. To stop this occupation. To stop the genocide of the Palestinian people.